Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Elder Nathaniel, on my right. Deacon Asa. Today's topic, we're going to go over the truth of thanksgiving. All right, but before we do so, let's open up with John chapter 8 and verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, the truth is that you're the Israelites. You were made slaves in America for breaking God's commandments. If you want deliverance, you must repent as the Israelites and keep the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. So let's open up with 2nd Ezra, send the Apocrypha. 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osea the king, whom Salmanasser the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. That place is America, what's called America today, go ahead that they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. For the Most High then showed them signs for them, and held still the floods, till they were passed over. For through that country, there was a great way to go. I mean, from Assyria, throughout the area where they traveled through the Euphrates, was a great way to go. Go ahead. Namely, of a year and a half. So it took them a year and a half to get over here. And the same region is called Arsereth. So this region that we call America was called Arsereth at one time, okay? So, proving to you that what? The ten tribes that came over here that you call Indians, the Bible calls the ten tribes of Israel. From there, let's go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 11, verse 10. They shall walk after the Lord. So the prophecy says that the Israelites shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. He shall roar like a lion. Go ahead. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. The Israelites shall tremble what? From the west. From the west. What does it mean, we shall tremble from the west? The western hemisphere, okay? That's what this side of the world is called, the western hemisphere, because over on Jerusalem's side, it's called the eastern hemisphere. Is that it? There's more. Go ahead. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt. Because we're going to be delivered from this captivity called spiritual, spiritually called Egypt. Go ahead. And as a dove out of the land of Assyria. Mm -hmm. And I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. The Most High is going to bring us back to our homeland. From there, let's go to Deuteronomy 33. Because some of you don't understand that just as the prophet Ezra prophesied the ten tribes will come on this side of the world, the prophet Moses prophesied the same thing. Deuteronomy 33, let's read verse 1 first. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. So now from there, jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. All I want is 20. And Gad, he said. And Gad, he said. Who is Gad? Gad are the ones you call today the North American Indians. Read it again. And Gad, he said. Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. Go ahead. He dwelleth as a lion. Meaning that the tribe of Gad would dwell like a predator. Okay? That's what it means was as a lion. They were predators upon the land here. Go ahead. And teareth the arm with the crown of the head. What does it mean? This is how we know that the North American Indians are the tribe of Gad. Read that again. And of Gad he said, Blessed he... Blessed he that enlargeth Gad. Mm -hmm. He dwelleth as a lion mm -hmm. and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. What does that part mean? He teareth the arm with the crown of the head. The tribe of Gad, the North American Indians, have something called a blood brother ritual. Where they would take, uh, they would go to the leader of the tribe and they would cut their arm and mingle their blood together. That was a custom that they had. Read that part again. And teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And why does it specify the crown of the head? Huh? Because the tribe of Gad had an unusual crown that was different than all the kings and leaders of the world. What was their crown? Okay? Their crown was made up of eagles' feathers. Okay? Was that it? All I want is that verse 20. That's it. Go to First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 8. And of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David into the hole to the wilderness men of might and men of war 
fit for the battle. Fit for the battle. That could handle shield and buckler. That could handle shield and buckler. Whose faces were like the faces of lions. Whose faces were like the faces of lions. Remember what Moses said about them, okay? Moses said that they would dwell upon the land like lions. When it says here, whose faces were like the faces of lions, what did the North American Indians used to do regarding their faces? Before they went to battle, they would put on what they call war paint, okay? And their faces looked fierce, okay? Was that it? Um, and were as swift as the rolls upon the mountain. Then it says here that the, the tribe of Gad, which are the North American Indians, were as swift as deers upon what? Upon the mountains. Upon the mountains. This tribe was bad. That's why when you examine, which, when you examine the 12 tribes, they were the last tribe to be conquered and overcome. And the white man could not do it alone. They had to get the tribe of Judah, the American black you call today, they had to get the tribe of Benjamin, the West Indian black, and the tribe of Issachar, the so-called Mexican, to help them overcome the tribe of Gad. Read that part again. Um... Verse 8. And, whose, and the buckler whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as rolls upon the mountain. Because the white man said in history they couldn't overcome him. They couldn't catch him. They needed help. Read. And of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David into the hole to the wilderness, men of might and men of war, fit for the battle that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as the rose upon the mountain. Because when you read the history, they said, these guys are too swift for us. That's why they had to get the buffalo soldiers, okay, to help overcome them. That's why they had to get the so-called Mexicans to help overcome them. Okay, from there, let's go back to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 20 again. This is for all you non-believers out there. This is how we know the Genesis and Deuteronomy proves who the tribes are. Whether you accept it or not, it doesn't mean anything. Because the word of God shall flourish. Read, read. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 20. And of God he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth God. He dwelleth as a lion. He dwelleth as a lion, meaning a predator. He was a powerful warrior, this tribe. Go ahead. And teareth the arm with the crown of the head. The blood brother covenant that they would make. Okay, with the crown of the head, they had an unusual crown made up of feathers. Go ahead. That's it. On read to 21. 21. And he provided the first part for himself. Now listen good to this part. Read it again. And he provided the first part for himself. When the tribes came on this side of the world, it says the tribe of Gad provided the first part for himself. What does it mean, the first part? The best part. The air, that's why North America, what you call today, is the headquarters of the so-called white man. They realized that of all the lands from North, Central, South America, even Canada, they said North America, that area there, that region, is the best. Read it again, verse 21. And he provided the first part for himself, because therein a portion of the lawgiver was he seated. So the tribe of Gad was seated as a lawgiver. Why? Because the tribe of Levi was cast out, as we proved to you in the book of Chronicles chapter 11 on other shows. Go ahead. And he came with the heads of the people. Notice, and he came with the heads of the people. Who were the heads of the people? Ephraim and Manasseh during this time. Go ahead. He executed the justice of the Lord. The tribe of Gad executed the justice of the Lord. And his judgments with Israel. And his judgments with Israel. From there, let's go to Psalms 49 now. Psalms 49. So what happened? When a so-called white man came on this side of the world with the pilgrims, because every year you celebrate what's called Thanksgiving. And you like to talk about the first Thanksgiving, about how the so-called Indians and the so-called pilgrims, the white man, they were so peaceable and loving with Squanto, the Indian who could speak both English and the Indian dialect, which was Hebrew, by the way, and they could converse. And they made peace, and they had turkey and squash and cranberry sauce. That's all bull crap, malarkey, and lies. Listen good to what I'm telling you. Psalms 49 and 11. Psalms 49 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Who is David talking about when he said their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever? The white man. They, they believe that they shall explore and seek out new frontiers. To dwell with and go where no man has gone before. That's why they create movies like Star Trek and all the Star Wars and all that. All right. well, read it again. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Watch this. And their dwelling places.
to all generations. Here it comes. They call their lands after their own names. They call their lands after their own names. They call their lands after their own names. When a so-called white man came on this side, remember it was not Columbus that came to the mainland, North America. Who was it? Who discovered it? Amerigo Vespucci, an Italian navigator. And after Amerigo Vespucci derived the name America. Okay, some books have it translated Americus Vespucci. Okay, so he came to this side in 1493. Okay, and his name was the name put on this continent over here. So from there, Deuteronomy 28 now. So now we've proven to you what has happened, okay? How did this land become known as America? Psalm 49, 11. God proved it and showed you it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Listen good. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Jump down to verse 30. Listen good. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. Thou shalt betroth a wife. And another man shall lie with her. Did, did that happen with the so-called American Indians, the Indians on this side of the world? Huh? Did they have wives and another man raped them? Yes! When a white man came and conquered, they were raping the so-called Native American women. Read. Thou shalt build a house. Did they have houses on this side? Yes! And when they were on the run, they set up what's called teepees or tabernacles or booths. Okay? Read it again. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Read. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Did the so-called American Indians have vineyards in this side of the world? Yes. Because some of you unlearned Negroes say, oh, they don't fit the prophecy. Gee, Negro, be quiet. Let's go to this book entitled The Way of the Warrior. Show them what the crown of the head looked like. There's an example of it. Here's another crown, okay, with the crown of the head. They had an unusual crown, okay, more unusual than any of the kings and leaders of earth. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. Let's go to that Time Life book, The Great Chiefs. Show them thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. What do you see? The so-called white man and thousands of oxen and buffalo slain before the eyes of the Native American Indians. So, thank you. So you Negroes at home that talk about, oh, they don't fit the curses. You brothers don't know, you don't know history. You don't know what you're talking about. You're filled with hatred. That's it. What verse you at? Verse 31. Come on. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, mm -hmm. and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face and shall not be restored to thee. Watch this, come thou, on. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, read. And thou shalt have none to rescue them. None to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Were the sons and daughters of the American Indians given into the hands of the white man? The answer is yes. Now what I'm going to do, I want to, I want to, I want you to go to Google Map. It's called M A A P, M A A P, and they're going to show you that many thousands of American Indians were sold as slaves on Wall Street. Okay, I'm going to show you a clip from Goodbye Uncle Tom, where they show you American Indians beside the Negroes sold into slavery. Un indiano non sarà mai uno schiavo. Nessuno è mai riuscito a farlo riprodurre in cattività. Non mangia, non parla, non dorme, non fa all'amore. Google uh, Thanksgiving genocide. Thanksgiving genocide or genocide Thanksgiving. They give you a list of the actual truth behind Thanksgiving. Now, I printed this up, so we're going to read this by a book by Glenn Ford that he had printed November 27th, 2006. Now, um, the highlighted parts is all we want. Just read it for me. Okay. White America embraced Thanksgiving because a majority of population glories in the fruits, if not the unpleasant details of genocide and slavery 
and fields. So white America, they like that story of Squanto and the Indians and their white pilgrims coming together. They like that so that you don't have to face the reality of the genocide your people caused. Was that it? On the whole, good about their heritage. To feel good about their heritage. Jump down here. The Thanksgiving story is an absolution of the pilgrims whose brutal quest for absolute power in the new world is made to seem both religiously motivated. It's, they make it seem religiously motivated. And eminently human. And eminently human. I'm going to show you that's a, a bold face lie. When they got over here, they say they came on Jamestown, Massachusetts in 1621 and all that. When was the Boston Tea Party and all that? R way after that. Way after that. Okay, go ahead. Most importantly, the pilgrims are depicted as victims of harsh weather and their own naive yet wholesome visions oh, of a new beginning. The wholesome and naive pilgrims, yes. Come on, was that's that it? it? That's it. Now, turn the next page. We ain't fin. I'm getting the key points. You can, you can Google this yourself. Now, there's books on it now, okay? The following year, Captain Hunt, an English slave trader, arrived at Patek Patuxet. It was common practice for explorers to capture Indians, take them to Europe, and to sell them into slavery for 220 shillings apiece. Wait, read that bottom part? Capture Indians and what? It was common practice for explorers to capture Indians, take them to Europe, and sell them into slavery for 220 shillings apiece. Take them to Europe and sell them into slavery. Do you Negroes know history? Oh, they don't fit. How'd they get to Europe on slave ships? That's what we showing you Negroes, filled with hatred, okay? Hold that. Get back to Deuteronomy uh, 28, 32 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Did the so-called American Indians have power and might to get their sons and daughters back from Europe? No! No! We're going to read more. Now, hold on. Let's go back to this now. I ain't finished because y'all like to talk about Squanto. You sit in your school systems and talk about Squanto. Ever ask yourself, how did Squanto, the so-called Indian, how is he able to translate for the so-called white man and the so-called Indians? Because Squanto, when you read the history, was a slave in Europe. And he found his way back, hiding on another ship to get back to his people. That's the history the so-called white people won't tell you, okay? Where are you at? Another common practice among European explorers was to give smallpox blankets small to the Indians. Smallpox blankets. Disease blankets to the Indians. Come on. Since smallpox was unknown on this continent prior to the arrival of the Europeans, mm -hmm. Native Americans did not have any natural immunity, immunity. immunity to the disease so smallpox would effectively wipe out entire villages with very little effort required by the Europeans. Now flip the page. Uh, we go. I'm just getting to the nitty gritty of the, of the thing. Y'all can read the rest on your own. Turn that. Come on. Right there, here and here. Most historians believe about 700 Pequots was slaughtered at Mystic. Mystic River. The 700 Pequot Indians. Go ahead. Many prisoners were executed, and surviving women and children sold into slavery in the West Indies. They were sold into slavery in the West Indies. How did they get to the West Indies on slave ships? Jump down. The Massachusetts government offered 20 shillings bounty for every Indian scout and 40 shillings for every prisoner who could be sold into slavery. Soldiers were allowed to enslave any Indian woman or child under 14 they could capture. Read. Um... And the, praying. the praying Indians who had converted to Christianity. Now, remember, the praying Indians who had converted to Christianity. Come on. The praying Indians who had converted to Christianity and fought on the side of the European troops. And fought on the side of the European troops like the Mexicans did, the tribe of Issachar did. Were accused of shooting into the treetops during battles with hostility, hostiles. They were enslaved or killed. Other peaceful Indians, Dartmouth and Dover, were invited to negotiate a, or seek refuge at trading posts and were sold onto slave ships. Sold onto what? Sold onto slave ships. Get Deuteronomy 2868 for the unlearned Negro at home. 
who like to say <laughs> they don't fit the curses. They didn't go into slavery on slave ships. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The word Egypt there means what? Bondage. Were they sent on slave ships to bondage in Europe and the West Indies? Yes. Read a book, Negro. The history tells you thousands of Americans, thousands upon thousands upon thousands were made slaves in Spain, Rome, Europe, and the West Indies. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Was anybody able to save the so-called American, American Indians? No. See, they don't teach us that in school. Okay, why? Because it's the good old divide and conquer. Don't teach the Negroes and don't teach the Indians that they were sold on slave ships. Don't teach that. Just teach that the so-called blacks were made slaves and sold on slave ships. That caused the divisions in our people. Now, we're on page eight now. Read that highlighted part. Page eight. The country they claimed as their own was fathered by genocide. Meaning, the white man claimed this as their own. It was fathered by what? By genocide and mothered by slavery. Fathered by genocide and mothered by slavery. Mm, come on. Next page. I, that section right there. Defenders of the holiday will claim that the political... Def wait, wait. Defenders of the holiday. He's talking about Thanksgiving. You know, the holiday that you blacks like to say... Oh, this is just a day to, us to come together to as come one that's family. Right. Foolish. <laughs> Read that again. Defenders of the holiday will claim that the politically corrected children's version promotes brotherhood. Mm -hmm. But that is an impossibility. A bold excuse to prolong the worship of colonial forefathers and to erase the crimes they committed. See? Those bastards burned the Pequot women and children and ushered in the multinational multi business of slavery. Mm. These are facts. The myth is an insidious diversion and worse. You see, you see what the author Glenn Ford wrote? He says, you that defend the holiday, who's he talking about? Just excuse the so-called white man because they're wicked as hell. Let's talk about you Negroes for a second. You are the defenders of the holiday. You ask a dumb Negro why they celebrate Thanksgiving? Oh, it promotes brotherhood and love for mankind, you dumb fools. That's what you are. Excuse me for calling you that. But when we bring the truth to you, you're the first ones to come up against the truth. Was that it, Flip the Page? I think that was it. Yeah, that's it. Flip, 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 flip. That was it. Good. Now, we're going to get right back to the Bible now. I haven't forgotten the Bible because the Bible is the foundation, okay? I just had to read that history for you so that you can get the understanding. Now, from there, bear with me a second. Let me fire, I lost my page. Let's go from there. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4. No, give me Deuteronomy 28, 36. Deuteronomy 28, verse 36. That's what I want. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Did that happen to the so-called American Indians? Yes, because when they were made slaves over throughout Europe, they were forced to worship the uh, white image of Jesus Christ. They were forced to do that. From there, let's go to Hosea 4 and 12. Okay. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 12. Hosea chapter 4, verse 12. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their stock declare it unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms has caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under their God. Keep reading. No, that was it. So our people have gone a whoring from under the Most High God. We've worshipped wood and stone. From there, let's go to Psalms 55, okay? Psalms, the 55th chapter. Let's get more into the celebrating of thanksgiving. Psalm 55, we want verse 20 and 21. Psalm 55, verse 20. He hath put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. He hath put forth his hands with such as be at peace with him. When the pilgrims came, remember, I want you to think about this. The pilgrims, they say, came around 1620, 1621, correct? But America, the mainland, was discovered around when? 1493. 
So within all that time, what was going on? You had white men traveling back and forth, okay? They decided they were gonna make this an extension of Europe, okay? So they were bringing uh, shiploads on the Mayflower, on the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, all those little ship names, the good ship, Jesus, and all them foolish names y'all had out there. Read it again. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. Right, so when the so-called Indians were at peace with you at first, but they realized that you was the great Satan that the Bible speaks of. Watch this. He had broken his covenant. He had broken his covenant because you white people, you set up many fake peace treaties with them. And let's see what happened. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Yeah, we're going to work together to do this, do that. But war was in his heart. The Bible says, but war was in your heart. You broke the covenant. Read that part again from the, the, the covenant part. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Before that. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. He had broken his covenant. He had broken his treaty. Go ahead. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Because the white man speaks good in his letters, okay? He writes real well. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. But behind all the writings, behind all his words, is war. That's what God says. You believe the Bible if you want, okay? You better believe the Bible for you disbelievers out there. From there, let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 6, okay? Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 6. For lo, I raise up the child he is, that bitter and hasty nation. Now, they remember the Bible is written twofold because these Chaldeans at one time was making reference to the ancient Babylonians. But this time, it ain't talking about the ancient Babylonians. It's talking about the white man. And as we read down, you will see what it's saying. Come on. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. That bitter and hasty nation, Which, because the white man is just as the ancient Babylonians were. That's why in Psalms, it calls the white man the daughter of Babylon. Read. Which shall march through the breadth of the land. Did they march through the breadth of the land? Did they march, march from South America up through North America, through Canada? Yes, they did. With all their armies, their military. Yes, read. To possess the dwelling places that are not there. What's, what was their purpose? To possess the dwelling places that are not there. So for you unbelievers, what is that talking about? Who marched through the land to possess the dwelling places that's not there? That's why your great white hunk, the so-called white man, that's who this is talking about. Read. They are terrible and dreadful. They are terrible and dreadful. That's why in Deuteronomy 28, Moses said, The Lord will raise up a nation against you which would not show favor to young or old. Read. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Come on. Their horses also are swifter than leopards. Did they come with horses? Large, powerful horses. Yeah, they did. Come on. And are more fierce than the evening wolves. And are more fierce than the evening wolves. Read. And We're just going down to 11. Okay. Right. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from the far. And their horsemen shall come from the far, meaning Europe. Go ahead. They shall fly as an eagle that hasted to eat. Why does it say they shall fly as the eagle? Huh? What was the symbol of Spain and France and America today? The eagle, the eagle, the eagle. Come on. They shall come all for violence. Why did they come? They shall come all for violence. No, the pilgrims came for peace. They shall come all for violence. So your Thanksgiving is a lie, thus saith the Lord. Your Thanksgiving day is based on genocide, evil, and bloodshed. Read. They shall come all for violence. Their face shall up, up as the east wind. Their face shall sup up as the east wind. What does that mean? Where did they come from? Europe. Where is that? The east. Go ahead. Their face shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as sad. They shall gather the captivity. Who's the captivity? The 12 tribes of Israel. They gather, gather us up as the sand. What verse you at? 10. Come on. And they shall scoff at the kings. And they the shall scoff. Did they scoff at the kings and the princes that were set up by the ten tribes? Yes, they did. The white man scoffed at their kings. Read. And they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be scorned unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust 
and take it. What does it mean that they shall heap dust and take it? Meaning confusion. How did they bring forth confusion? With their religions. Their Jesuit priests came forth first. What does the word Jesuit mean? It means crafty ones, okay? Because they came to the so-called Indians talking that religious garbage about love for brotherhood and peace for all mankind. And what did they do? Slaughter them. Say, here, we're giving you peace. Here's blankets to keep warm. Filled with disease. Filled with smallpox. What verse you at? 11. Come on. Then shall his mind change. Then shall his mind change. Meaning the white mind of the so-called white man. And he shall pass over and offend. And he shall pass over and offend. Why? How did his mind change? Because after a while, he stopped with all the bloodshed once he gathered the captivity as the sand. His mind changed. And he said, let's bring forth peace. Let's unite all races as one under us. And they call it today what? Democracy. Was that it? Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. This imputing power unto his God. Wait a minute. That, that struck a nerve there. Bear with me a second. I thought I saw something again. Now that part where it said they, uh, what was the bottom part of that verse in 11, I think it was? Imputing this his power unto his God. Watch this. Read that. The English settlers, their Austin ostensibly religious venture backed by a trading company were glad to discover that they had landed in a virtual cemetery in 1620. Corn still sprouted in the abandoned fields of Wampanasa, but only a remnant of local population remained around the fable rock. In a letter to Talking England... About Plymouth Rock. Go ahead. In a letter to England, Massachusetts Bay Colony founder John Winthrop wrote, but for those the natives in these part, God has so pursued them. See, they're saying God has pursued the so-called Indians. Good. As for 300 miles. For 300 miles. Space. And the greatest part of them are swept away by smallpox, which continues among them. So as God has thereby cleared our title to this place, those who remain in these parts, being in all not 50, have put themselves under our protection. See, they imputed their power to their God, the white image of Jesus. Okay, from there, let's go to Genesis 49, verse 1 and 2. Okay, Genesis 49, verse 1 and 2. A lot of you always write us, how do you know the Native American Indians are the tribe of Gad? It's told you here. Joseph prophesied it. Come on. Genesis chapter 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. So I'm sorry, Jacob. I said Joseph, but Jacob. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Mm -hmm. What verse was that? Two? That was two. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him. See, he says in the spirit that Gad, a troop shall overcome him. Who was the troop that overcame the tribe of Gad? The troop is called the United States Cavalry, led by Andrew Jackson, okay? They made funny movies about it called F Troop. Y'all never saw those movies, F Troop, where the F Troop would fight against American Indians and overcome them. Read it again. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So you got all these clues about who the American Indians are. We read in Deuteronomy where, where, where Moses said what? that they would uh, 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 cut the arm with the crown of the head. They would take the uh, first part of the land for themselves. Uh, David said they would be warriors. Their faces would be like lions, okay? And they crown. And it, with the crown of the head. Here it says what? That they would be overcome by a troop, okay? All these clues are in the Bible for you to read and understand. From there, go to Isaiah 65. So we just read, Jacob said a troop will overcome you, Gad. Meaning what? In the future, in the last days, they would be overcome by a troop. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 11. Isaiah 65 verse 11. But ye are they that forsake the Lord. But ye are they. Listen good, black man, black woman. But ye are they that forsake the Lord. That forget my holy mountain. The Israelites forget the holy mountain of God. That prepare a table for that troop. That prepare a table for that troop. What is that talking about? Thanksgiving. That prepare a table for that troop. Because just like many of you so-called Native American Indians who are destroyed and brainwashed, 
You prepare a table for those that overcame you. You so-called blacks do the same thing, and you call it Thanksgiving Day. Read it again. But here are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that truth. So do our people prepare a table for the truth that overcame us? Yes. We prepare a table. You call it Thanksgiving. The last Thursday of every November. Right? Right. From there, let's go to... And, well, there's more. Okay. And that furnish the drink offering unto that number. And it furnish a drink offering unto that number. Thank you. I'm glad you read that part. So now, you ever wonder why the Thanksgiving meal is the turkey, the stuffing, the cranberry sauce, the apple cider? You ever wonder about those things? Be listen, because they, they, history tells you that the first time they sat down, it was those foods was not there to be eaten. So where did it come from? Think about it. Everything the so-called white man does has a metaphoric meaning behind it. What did the turkey represent? The body, the overcoming of the tribe of Gad. That represents their body. What did the cranberry sauce represent? The spilling of their blood, okay? What did the stuffing represent? Because they did many atrocities to our people. Many unspeakable atrocities. They would cut off the breasts of the Indian women and play baseball with them, throwing them around, okay? They would cut off their heads and carry them to get money, but they realized that was too much, so they cut off their scalps. And a lot of you unlearned Negroes say, oh, the Indians started scalping people. No, they did that when the white man started doing that to them. Read a book, please. Get a clue, okay, you brainwashed Negroes. From there, let's go to Hosea. Chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Okay, and don't think because I'm exalting my voice, I'm filled with hatred. No, it's zeal, it's passion, and love for my people, for the word of the Most High. That's what it is. Don't mistake it. Hosea 7, verse 8 and 9. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Now, why is it specifying Ephraim here? Because Ephraim was the head tribe of the ten tribes that came on this side of the world. Some of you unlearned blacks go, why did he get straight here? Why are they a lighter brown than we are? Some of them even look white. Read it again. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim, he has mixed himself amongst the people. Ephraim is a cake, not turned. He is a cake, not turned. If you get a pancake and don't turn it over, one side is extremely light, one side is extremely dark. So all the ten tribes have that characteristic, okay? Because they were mixing with the enemies from the time of the Assyrian captivity all the way up till today. Was that it? Come Strangers on. have devoured his strength. Strangers have devoured his strength. And he knoweth it not. He knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. Yet he knoweth not. From there, go to Proverbs 15, verse 17. Proverbs 15 and verse 17. Okay? Watch Proverbs this. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 17. Talk about the American Indians had uh, the first Thanksgiving day with the white man. Listen good. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is. Better is a dinner of herbs, meaning all you got is vegetables, where love is. Than a stalled ox. Than a stalled ox. And hatred therewith. And hatred therewith. Because when a certain tribe sat down with the white man and they had all plenty of food, there was hate in the heart of the so-called white man. They were planning to overcome them and break the treaties, okay? From there, let's go to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5, verse 21 to 23. Amos chapter 5, verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days. You hear what God says about your feast days like Thanksgiving? Read it again. I hate. I despise your feast days. God says he hates your feast days. Okay, your feast days like Thanksgiving. Read. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Oh, God is very pleased with our turkey, our stuffing, our cranberries. That's the dumb, unlearned black man and black woman. Read it again. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. He will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. God says he ain't accepted it. Come on. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat. Because now what do you do today? You sit in your churches and go, God bless America. God accept and bless the food which we are about to receive. The turkey, the stuffing, the cranberry sauce, the apple cider, the ham hocks, the pineapples. That's what you do. How do I know? Because I sat in many of your abominable churches on so-called Thanksgiving. Was that it? Down to 23. 
Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. Because right behind the Thanksgiving prayer and dinner, they singing songs. They singing. They just a singing. Come on. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vow. You hear what God says for you fake Christians that think God accepts your thanksgiving? Was that it? But let judgment run down as waters. Wait, 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 wait. It says let judgment run down as waters. What does that mean for your thanksgiving? You talk about judgment. You got all your little white friends that talk about the white man don't know judgment. He don't know justice. Because in order to know judgment, in order to know justice, he must return the land to the so-called American Indians. Because this is their land that was stolen. They got to they gotta bring back all the souls that they murdered. Over 77 million lives they slaughtered. What you Negroes talking about? They didn't go fit the curses. What verse you at? Verse 24. Come on. But look, no, I just went down to 23. Isaiah 1 now, verse 14 to 20. We're going to read Isaiah 1, verse 14 to 20. Okay? Let judgment and justice rain down. That's what God says. You Negroes talking about Thanksgiving Day. You better shut up before judgment come on you. And it's about to. Where you at? Isaiah 1, verse 14. Come on. Your new moons and your appointed feast days and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. When you examine history, did the Native Americans uh, honor the new moons? Yes, they did. Okay, yes, they did. Read it again. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. But it said God would hate that. Why? Because what was the American Indians doing on this side? The tribe of Gad. They were mixing the learned understanding of the Bible with heathen practices. Come on. They are a trouble unto me. Mm -hmm. I am weary to bear them. Come on. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Did the American Indians, when they prayed, they raised their hands to the Most High God. And he said, I will hide my eyes from you. You Negroes at home. You Latinos at home. Okay? Do you raise your hands to the Lord? Yes. And he said he will turn his eyes from you too. Read with your thanksgivings. Yea, when ye make many prayers. You make your prayers on thanksgiving. God bless us all. Everyone. I will not hear. He said he will not hear. Read. Your hands are full of blood. Your hands are full of blood. How about that, Negroes? Because now don't let me go back to something. Because a lot of you, some of you blacks go, oh, oh, the American Indians had some of us in slavery, like the Choctaw tribe, the Chickasaw tribe, two of the five civilized nations. Yes, that's true. That is true. Read the book, Black Indians by William Lawrence Katz. It tells you that the white man forced, listen good to what I'm saying, forced the five civilized nations to enslave the blacks, to keep that division amongst us. But it tells you three of them, three of the tribes, including the Seminoles, it says when a white man came back, they said, why do you got these blacks as princes and kings amongst you? That ain't what you, we told you to do. And they took away their women and all that. They said, if you don't do what we say, we're going to take your women, take your kids, and take your land. So you black men, be quiet. You don't know the atrocities done. Okay? You don't know what happened. But you never speak about the Buffalo soldiers. I see that part. When a white man got them and, and deceived them and said, oh, we're going to give you 40 acres and a mule. Just help us overcome them damn engines over there. And the so-called unlearned, uneducated Negro, yes, a massa, yes, a and helped overthrow. And you got songs glorifying Buffalo Soldier. Bob Marley singing those foolish songs about the destruction of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what the song glorifies. It glorifies Uncle Tom's. Read that part again. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. That's down to 20 I want to go down to. Wash you, make you clean. Wash you, make you clean, meaning repent. Put away the evil of your doings. We all must put away the evil of our doings. All of us, all the 12 tribes, and return to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the one true God. Read. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Now, from there. Let's go to Lamentations 5. Lamentations chapter 5. Okay? We're going to read verse 1 through 8. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 1. Listen good. Remember, O Lord, 
what has come upon us. This is what the tribes said, the 10 tribes. And what you also include, I'll include, I'll say the 12 tribes, because when you read down, it does mention Judah too. Read again. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Mm -hmm. Consider and behold our report, reproach. Our inheritance is turned into strangers. No, no, read it properly. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. What was the inheritance? I'm dealing with the 10 tribes right now. What was their inheritance? It told you in 2nd Ezra 13. We read it at the beginning of the lesson. How 10 of the tribes came on this side of the world where never mankind dwelt. Read it again. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens. And our houses have been turned to aliens. So what does that mean? The white man likes to call the so-called American Indians and all the Indians on this side of the world aliens. Is that correct? That's what they call them. But God calls the white man aliens. Read that again. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. The white man is the alien according to the Bible. Read. We are orphans and fatherless. We are orphans and fatherless because what did the white man do? We read it earlier. They killed all the kings. They killed the princes. They left women and children. That's what they did. Come on. Our mothers are as widows. Our mothers are as widows. Read. We have drunken our water for money. We had to drink our own water for money. Read. Our wood is sold unto us. The wood we got here, our trees, our forests is given to us for money. Our necks are under persecution. Our necks are under persecution. Come on. We labor and have no rest. We labor and have no rest because when the Spanish white man came, I'm going back now. They forced the Indians to mine for gold and diamonds. And if you didn't bring gold and diamonds back, by the end of the day, your hand was cut off and you were not allowed to eat, you were not allowed to drink. So you black men, you don't know history. Just be quiet, listen, and learn. Read. We have given the land to the Egyptians. We have given the land to the Egyptians. That word just means the, the captors, the slave masters. Read. And to the Assyrians, to be satisfied with bread. To be satisfied with bread. We're just going down to eight. Our fathers have sinned and are not. Our fathers have sinned and are not because they were killed. Come on. And we have borne their iniquity. And the descendants have borne the iniquity of the forefathers. Come on. Servants have ruled over us. Uh-oh. The Bible says servants have ruled over us. Yeah, Miss Black Woman, that white man you like to call a hunk, oh, look at Brad Pitt. He's such a hunk. The Bible says servants have ruled over us. Hold that. Give me Ecclesiasticus 10 and 7. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 7. Because the Bible says servants have ruled over us. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 7. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses. Who's speaking here? Solomon is speaking in a, in a spirit. Read it again. I have seen servants upon horses. Solomon said, I have seen servants upon horses. What does the horse represent? Power, authority. Read it again. I have seen servants upon horses. Who was the servant sitting upon horses? The white man. Read. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. There's a famous statue with the white man on a horse. You got a so-called American Indian on one side and a Negro on the other side. The Negro got his gun up saying what? I'm going to fight for you, master. When you look at the American Indian, the, the butt of his gun, the nozzle of his gun is pointed down because he refused to fight. The majority of them, let me word it like that, refused to fight. Okay? Come on. Where you at? Go back to that. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 8. Servants have ruled over us. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. There is none that can deliver us out of their hand. The American Indians also had something set up called AIM, the American Indian Movement, which was based upon the Black Panthers. The Mexicans had something called the Brown Berets. The Puerto Ricans had something called the Young Lords. There was none that could deliver. All the tribes had revolutionary groups. They all failed. There's one savior, that's Jesus the Christ. He's the king, he's the Lord of Lords, he's the master, okay? From there, let's go to Nahum, chapter three and verse one, the book of Nahum. Nahum chapter three, verse one. Woe to the bloody city. The Bible says woe to the bloody city. What does the word woe mean? Destruction, destruction, destruction. Read it again. 
Woe to the bloody city. What's the bloody city? The United States of America. How did they get this land? Was it through peace? Huh? It was through bloodshed. Read it again. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies. It is what? It is all full of lies. It is all full of lies. You go to school and you're taught lies. Every time my child come home, I gotta, I gotta clean out their minds. That's a lie, daughter. Son, that's a lie. Okay? They go, Dad, did the Indians sell uh, America, Manhattan, for how much? Um, um, $24 worth of a worthless bee beads? Bee I say, hell no. <laughs> and they were expert bee makers. They were expert beads makers. And history says the Indians had gold and diamonds woven in their clothes like we got on today. Gold all in their soul. Why would, are they that dumb? But that's why I read that again. It is all full of lies and robbery. It is all, this land is all full of lies and robbery. Come on. The prey departeth not. The prey departeth not. Who's the prey? We're the prey. The 12 tribes of Israel. Do we depart? Are we seeking to leave this place? No. You ain't looking for another country. Hold that. Give me that in uh, uh, Hebrews. We seek a country. Hebrews, bear with me a second. Give me Hebrews 11. It might be chapter 11. It might be 10. Mm, bear with me a second. See, things be popping in my mind. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 14. Come on. Hebrews 11 verse 14. Listen good. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. The new Jerusalem upon earth. Do you Negroes talk about that? You seeking a country? No. You singing, God bless America. That's what you're doing. That's what you do. Go back to that where you was at in Nahum. Did you finish verse 1? Verse 1 again. Woe to the bloody city that is full of lies and robbery. The prey departed not. The noise of a whip and the noise of rattling of wheels. That's in history, okay? What verse you at? Verse 2. I just wanted one. Okay. Go to Revelation, uh, 2 Chronicles 28. Second Chronicle. I'm going back now to the, the foolish Negro that says, we're going to read this quick, that says, the Choctaw and the Chickasaw, oh, they had us as slaves, so they're not Israelites. You die. And you, you know what that proves? You don't even know the Bible. Why do I waste my time talking to you? You don't even know the Bible. Second Chronicles 28, read verse 8 through 11. Quickly, please. Second Chronicles 28, verse 8. Let's see if the ten tribes ever had the kingdom of Judah in slavery. Listen good. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren 200,000 women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. So they took the, the Israel took their brethren captive. Read it again. And the children of Israel that carried the away. The children of Israel are the ten tribes. Read it again. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren, two hundred thousand women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them, and brought the spoil to Samaria. To Samaria, that's where Ephraim dwelt. Come on. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. Listen good. And he went out. Before the host that came to Samaria and So Oded stood before Ephraim and all the ten tribes. He stood in their path. What did he say? And said to them, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wroth with Judah. Because the Lord God of your fathers was mad with Judah. Come on. He hath delivered them into your hand. That's why God delivered them into your hand. Read. And ye have slain them in a rage. And you have slain Judah in a rage. Come on. That reacheth up unto heaven. Because Ephraim and the other ten tribes raged against us, and they killed many of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Read. And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen. You want to keep them for bondmen? This is what the prophet is saying to the ten tribes. You want to make Judah, Benjamin, and Levi bondmen, slaves? And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bond men and bond women unto you, but are there not with you even with you sins against the Lord your God? So now the prophet says, remember you yourselves have sinned. Let them know that you're guilty just like Judah is. You can be made slaves just like Judah. Read. What all we're going down to is 11. Verse 11. Now hear me therefore and deliver the captives again which ye have taken captive of your brethren. For the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. So what does this prove? That the kingdom of Israel had the kingdom of Judah in captivity. Slaves. Okay? So does that mean that they're not Israelites? That proves one thing. You don't know the Bible. 
That's what that proves. Because you are quick to write on our comments, how could the Indians be Israelites when some of their tribes made the blacks as slaves? We just read that in the Bible. We just read that in the Bible. I'm going to say it again. We just read that in the Bible. Listen good, okay? From there, let's go to Revelation 7. Revelation 7, we want verse 4 and 5, okay? Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. Listen good. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So there's going to be a hundred and forty-four thousand leaders, men of all the tribes of the children of Israel, sealed with the law and the testimony of who they are and what they must do, okay? How are they going to be sealed? Jump down to verse 4 and 5. Verse 4. Verse, yeah. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Judah is sealed twelve thousand. How is Judah going to be sealed with this understanding if you don't know who Judah is? Huh? You busy talking about maybe the Chinese is Judah. You simple as hell. You got to know who Judah is in order for Judah to be sealed with the knowledge and the testimony of who they are and what God requires of them. You got to know who Judah is. Read. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. How is Reuben going to be sealed if you don't know who Reuben is? You talk about we don't know who they are. You, you just, you hear the truth and you refuse to accept it because your elder wasn't the one that God opened his understanding to. That's called envy and jealousy. We bring to you the understanding of who Reuben is, of who Jude is. No, 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 no. We don't know who they is. Nobody know who they is. So how they gonna be sealed, brother? How are they going to be sealed, sister? Come on. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad is sealed 12. How is Gad going to be sealed if you don't know who Gad is? If they don't know who they are, how are they going to be sealed with the understanding that they're Gad? Huh? How is that going to happen? How is that going to be fulfilled? Huh? Open your brain. Open your mind. Brothers, sisters, this is all said not out of hatred, but it's meant out of love. We must, as a people, come together and a righteous understanding of the Most High, understanding his laws and his truth, okay? We are bringing you the truth, the understanding of who Judah is, who Gad is, who Reuben is, who Benjamin is, who Levi is, who Ephraim and Manasseh, okay, who Zebulon is, Naphtali, Issachar. We've been telling you that for years, but because you have personal hatred against our people, you reject it. But you're so quick to call the Philistines Israelites. Oh, the Umbobo tribe. Yes, the Umbobo. They sold your behind over here. Okay? Then some of you go, oh, no, 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 no. But the white man could come and you quick to marry the, marry the white woman. That's what you do. But the so-called Indians that were there, no, no, no. Some of you out in California, you might have got beat up by MS-16. Some of you might have gotten killed by them, robbed by them. So what? Should they now turn around and say, oh, we don't accept the blacks because a black man robbed me? Huh? That's foolishness. We all got to repent of our sins. Every last one of us. Brothers and sisters, I pray you understand. I really pray you do. Okay? We want to keep, we need to keep this program going, brothers and sisters. We can't do it without you. We as a people, get Zephaniah 2 and 1 for me. I need to show you the scripture before we close. Zephaniah chapter 2, right there, verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourself together. Yea, gather yourself together, O nation not desired. Hear what God says. We must gather ourselves together. Okay? We got to gather ourselves together in the understanding of what the Most High God says. Put away our differences. Put away our hatred, our envy, our jealousy. Come together. Bring forth your donations, your offerings to help us keep the program going, brothers and sisters. For more information, visit our website at www.israelunite.org or on YouTube. You can visit us at www.youtube.com slash Nathaniel7. And with that, we give all praise to the Most High and Son Christ, and we say Shalom. Shalom, Israel.